everybody, Cam Biker here. And I'm just finishing off the uh, job on the front wheel before I start tackling the rear, rear tyre. And I thought I'd record a video, and I don't know if I'll put this up. Depends if somebody asks for it or not, but um, I suppose there is, a, there is an important point to putting a front wheel in to do with brakes, so maybe worth putting this one up anyway. So let's see. But I'm just going to put the front wheel back in the bike now, so this should be quite a quick one. Um, let me show you where I'm up to. If you've watched the earlier video where I was taking everything apart, you'll probably understand the green bits. Um, those are my makeshift brake caliper hangers. So I've just got the calipers hanging off the um, brake levers, a couple of rags to stop them touching the paintwork in case I knock them, um, just to take the strain off the uh, brake lines. And at the minute, down there, I've got the axle in the front wheel just so that I've got the spaces in the right order and the right way around so I don't forget them. So I'm going to pop those out now and then put the wheel back in. Now before I refit my axle, I'm just going to give it a bit of grease. Just bog standard lithium based grease. just to keep it nice and fresh. Get my tyre, or my wheel I should say, and make sure it's the right way around. So I've got my uh, arrows pointing for going forwards and I've still got my arrows down here on my brake disc so I can double check that I did actually fit the tyre the right way around. And then what I'll do is just pop the spacers in making sure they go in the way around that they were before and they've got a little bit of grease on them as well and then I can just weigh it up. Now there should be nothing to stop this tyre going in um, there's no calipers on there anymore the mudguard gets in the way a little bit I'll just turn against that and then the tricky bit is always lining everything up nicely so that the spacers don't get knocked out as you put the wheel in and so that the axle holes line up with the uh, holes at the end of the forks. Now I've got a swanky lift here so I've got this at pretty much the right height so that everything lines up nicely. If you haven't, one trick, let me show you the trick, is to have a really really long screwdriver and you put the screwdriver through the axle in the wrong direction in the direction that the axle doesn't go in and that allows you then you can use that screwdriver to basically jiggle the thing about and get it lovely and lined up so that the axle will go through smoothly hopefully I won't need that trick but we'll find out in a moment so the wheels in the spaces have stayed in position I can now Try and slide this through and it will take a little bit of a jiggle here and there. I might have to adjust the lift a little bit to get it just right. And basically I just need to get it through enough that I can get it to catch the threads on the other side. And then I'll loosely, loosely tighten it. That seems like an odd phrase doesn't it, loosely tighten it, but you know what I mean. I'll take all of the slack out of it just using a ratchet. Now that it's generally in, we'll switch to the torque wrench. It's a very high torque on this. Obviously it's an important bolt, the axle. So it's actually 108 according to the manual. So I'm going to start about there, that's 98, and just get a bit of tightness on it. And I might need to lower the bike a little bit to stop the wheel turning, we'll see in a moment. I don't like this level of tightness, it always feels like a lot. Turn that up then to 108. It 
So that's the Axle 108. As I mentioned in my previous video, there's also two axle clamp bolts underneath that are going to tighten up this circular area here, take away some of that gap and make sure there's absolutely no way that axle can come out while you're riding. Now these are a lot lower torque, so I've got to go to my teeny tiny torque wrench. These need 20. Let's dial in. I'm going to go a bit lower than that. So I'm going to dial in there 16 to start with. And I'm going to do both of them to 16. What you don't want on these is to have one tighter than the other and then it's not nipping up as you want it to all nice and cleanly. You don't want it kind of wonky to one side because it won't be doing its job properly. Let's set up. So, start with this side. Take the slack out. And then we'll get 16 away. And then the other pinch bolt. Sixteen on that one, and then we'll go up a little bit, so let's take it to eighteen. See, we're just adding a tiny amount now. Oops. And then finally, to the twenty newton meters. Meters, I sound like a Radio 1 DJ, Newton meters that it wants. So that's now fully tightened up. Now a little safety tip for you. You can get torque pens, actually called torque pens. I've got my cheap version, cheap equivalent, which is just a, an artist's paint pen. And all I'm going to do, now that I've tightened that up, I'm just going to put a little mark on the axle and where the axle's going into. And I'll do the same underneath as well. Zoom in on that just to show you that mark. And all that's going to do, this white mark here, you can probably see a black one from last time. Um, all that's going to do is if that were to start coming loose, I'd be able to see that those two white marks diverged. So it's just a handy trick. After you've tightened th something like this up, bit of paint, bit of mark, marker pen, nail varnish, whatever you've got to hand. Uh, I've given up wearing the nail varnish nowadays, so you know, I uh, go with a paint pen. But just on those key bolts that need to be tightened to a specific torque, just in case they didn't get properly tightened, just gives you that opportunity to spot that those two marks start to diverge, which means something's coming loose. So you go out for a, a ride for a few miles, just check it afterwards. So I shall mark the pinch bolts as well. And I'll do it underneath. You know, it is white paint, you don't want it to be too obvious, do you? Now then, one other thing for safety. I've been using these gloves, same gloves that I used to wipe grease onto the axle with and I've been messing about with the uh, wheel and I've probably touched the brake discs at some point or other. So what I'm going to do now, before I put the calipers back on, so there's no chance that I'm going to have some grease on there that then gets into contact with the pads and ruins my pads, I'm basically just going to clean the discs with a bit of brake cleaner. So I just use this simple car plan stuff, it's about 10 quid for a big 5 litre tub of it and uh, just one of those rags you get from one of your pound shops or your, your cheap shops. Quite a lot of gunge. And I'll keep doing this until when I do it, the rag is clean. 
next thing I'm going to do is put the calipers back on. Now, just unhook all of these gubbins and we'll see if they'll go back on. Obviously when I took them off I gave them a wiggle to get them away from the discs. It's possible that they won't go back on easily, in which case I might need to spread the pads a bit. In fact I do. There are proper tools for doing this and I am a proper tool so I'm going to use just a screwdriver and just gently, gently prise them apart a little bit just to push the pistons back a bit. And there they go. Obviously you've got to be very careful. Yeah, it kind of goes without saying but then you see pictures on the internet of people who've done it. So you've got to be careful that you actually get your pads one on either side of the disc. You do see these pictures where both pads are on one side of the disc and then they're not going to do anything at all. So that's on there, the pads are on both sides and I did check the wear indicators as I was doing that and they're fine. I might do a video about checking that later. Now what is important is that you get the tightness on these right. These are quite tight. They probably don't feel quite tight if you're just doing them by hand and you know what you're doing. But um, they are quite need to be quite tight for a lot of fasteners on bikes. And if they're not tight enough, well there are several people I know who've had them not tight enough and have had calipers come off whilst riding. Um, not to pick on him at all, but I'll try and find a video of Phil 480 did where he had this problem because he's, he's calipers weren't talked up properly and his caliper came off on a bike that only had one caliper I believe at the front. So again trusty torque wrench at the ready to top these up. I think I might have to lower the bike a bit because that wheel just wants to turn. Again, as with the pinch bolts, just to make sure it all goes on nice and square, I do a bit on one and a bit on the next. I keep doing that until they're torqued up. And that's it. Then we'll do the same on the other side. So exactly the same process again. Now you can of course, when you've tightened these up, do exactly the same thing again. But a, Talk pen, paint pen, nail varnish, marker pen, whatever it is. Again, on the bit on the caliper, bit on the nut, just to mark where they were talked to. And again, just to check if those things start to move apart after you've gone for a little run. And I'll zero off my torque wrench. Not something I've mentioned before, but I'll always turn it to its least resistance when you're storing it because uh, you don't want it to be under any tension. And then there's one last job to do, and it's an absolutely critical one. Don't forget this one. Now, if you remember, I've separated those pads, moved them apart, so they're no longer touching the discs, which means this lever here is going to do nothing. It's absolutely nothing there at all. So it's absolutely critical that whenever you've had your calipers off and you've had that potential of moving your pads and the pistons around, that you just work your front brake this, front brake this, your front brake lever until it's back to its normal solid brake. If it doesn't go back to its normal solid brake, something's really wrong, don't go for a ride. But do remember to do this because I've heard so many tales of people who have done all this work and gone, right, I'm going to go and try my new tyres out now. And the first junction or bend they get to where they need to use the brakes, they find they haven't got any. So, they're good and solid again. 
everything's working and once I've got the thing off the um, the stands later I'll be checking my brakes with a bike on the ground to make sure they'll actually stop the thing moving. I nearly forgot to fit the crash protection back in. But there it is, just two spanners. Now I did say that'd be a quick one and I suspect I've gone a bit longer than I anticipated but safety in it and all that. So hope that was useful. Thanks for watching everyone. Ride safe and I shall talk to you all again soon.